Okay, so we've uh, set up the machine and uh, just gone through the parameters there and stuff. So we're at the point now, let's create some artwork uh, and go through the process of how we uh, generate the artwork and export the G-code, load that into the control software, reference the machine, get the start position and then click go. And that's basic, the basic steps of actually going from your design to actually machining out your part. So I'm just gonna use a bit of software here, Aspire. This is uh, on VCarve Pro as well, very similar. They're both based on the same uh, engine. And what we'll do here is um, just create a new file. And that's just an arbitrary um, uh, size of a rectangle 200 by 100 and let's assume it's uh, 10 millimeters thick and uh, this is an important thing here the origin of, of our design file here it's bottom left so if I've got something like a rectangular bit of material I would put that there or if I generating work with a lot of symmetry I'll often go to the uh, zero point here at uh, the center and that means that if I create here I can mirror it over the axis and stuff um, but for our simple example, I'll just put it bottom left, that means that our origin's down here. And um, what I'll do now is just hit OK. So these are our drawing controls in Aspire. And we've also got some toolpath controls here that we'll look at a little bit later. But just for a very simple example, uh, what I'll do is I'll just draw um, a rectangle. Um, and um, our anchor point is just where we're pinning it on the screen here. And um, so let's just put that at something like 50-50. Um, and um, it's a perfect square, or we've got a nice radius on that. And um, just put that to eight. And then the actual size of our rectangle, I can type it in here as, um, so let's put that down as 40-30. Uh, and I'll click create, it generates it for me. Um, and this software though, the other way I can do it is just like that. I just draw it and uh, then I can type in settings here to move things across. 100 by 50, you can see it shifts. Um, and what we'll do is close that, that's fine. And actually I'll just delete this one here, we don't need it. So there's a bit of our artwork and what we can do is just center that in the job automatically using that. Um, so really now we've got something drawn here. In this software I just select it and then I've got a toolpath and I'll hit this little um, pin there just to keep it open. And if I want I can get rid of this other stuff but I just like to keep them both on the screen if I need to make changes. Um, so that's selected and what I need to do now is apply some sort of toolpath operation. So I could create a profile um, or I could cut a pocket out of the material um, or I could be doing drilling, text, all stuff. But what I'll do, just simple profile operation here. So I select this operation and anything that was selected here, if I had other artwork also selected, this would be applied to it. Anything that's not selected, this isn't applied. So the cut depth, this is the total depth um, in the material uh, that we're cutting. So we've got a 10 millimeter block of material. So let's, for argument 6a, we're just going to do a recess, which is three millimeters deep. And um, I'll select a bit for that. So I've got my tools here, a three millimeter end mill. And uh, the important settings here, these are all set in by default. The pass depth, this is the important one, says how much I'm allowing to go in one, in one uh, plunge. Well, three is okay, but if I put this to 1.5, it would actually go down 1.5, do the, the vector, and then it would do another 1.5 till I get this three. And um, so three is fine, it'll mean there's only one tool path. This is really ignored because we don't have control of spindle speed. Feed rate, this is the speed that we're feeding into the, the job material. So I'll just put it at 10 millimeters a second. And generally plunge rate, I'll put that at half, whatever the feed rate is. And um, if I can feed at that rate in the material, generally I can plunge at half the speed. It seems to work okay. Hit apply, that saves that for, for next time. And then uh, one other thing here, the step over. This is just um, the tool has a 40% step over what the previous tool uh, pass was and that just gives you gives you a nicer finish and um, if you change that up to 80% that means that you know and um, you know it, it 
covers you know only 20% of what the original pass was. Where if I change it to 10%, 90% of what the original pass was co was covered within with the next pass, and that just means that you'll get it an even finer finish. So generally, um, for the first pass, a rougher cut, you would ch change that lower, and then if you're doing a fine finishing pass, then uh, you would reduce this down to maybe 10% step over. But anyway, we leave that default for now. Okay, and this is just telling us. Um, are we cutting our tool on the line in the middle? If I and you watch this right in the middle there, and I say inside, you'll see this going to be cutting inside whatever this is. And what that means is then I'll be cutting a window out of the material uh, on the side, and it, this software will take care of all the tool compensation. Or outside, if I want to cut this rectangular piece out of that, and this is what I'm interested in. But let's just say we're um, uh, inside, so that'll be cutting uh, this on the inside. And uh, we can ignore the ramps for now, that just leaves little, uh, sorry, tabs, that just puts little tabs to hold the, the material when, when you're finished, if you're cutting right through. And uh, I'll just calculate this now. And you'll see that this is our block of material, 10 millimeters uh, thick, um, by 100 uh, by 50, was it? And then this is the preview option, so if I just hit preview toolpath, you'll see that our 3 millimeter end mill has cut uh, into that. Now, say for example I want to cut right through the material, I can close this, and if I go into Profile, um, I can change this to 10, uh, and generally I'll be going right through it, I'll want to pit a little bit extra, so I'm cutting into the sacrificial material below to get a nice finish on the underside. Um, so um, what you'll notice here, I'll leave the tool at 3 millimeters, so it will have actually four passes for the tool, it'll be 3, 6, 9, and then um, 1.5 for the final pass. So if I hit calculate, it's giving me a warning. Yes, I'm going through to 10.5, and the material is only 10 thick. But we know that we're aware of that. That's okay. And as you can see, those are the, the, the four tool passes: three, six, nine, and then to the 10.5. So I just put it to the head-on view there, and I'll reset the previous preview. And you can see now. And if I go uh, preview tool path you can see that that's cut right through and you can see what you'll get and this other material you, there's an option here to delete waste material and you can get a good view then of what the material is going to look like when you um, machine it out and using these features we can actually do all the development in this software without actually having to cut anything so this saves a lot of time and another nice feature of this software if I you know I can zoom it in and tilt it wherever I want I can actually um, save a preview image of this so it can have a nice intricate design. I can send that out to a customer just as a, a graphics file and say this is what it would look like if you have to proceed with the job. And so the last step is then select our tool paths there and you'll see them now uh, highlighted on the screen so if I untick that that's gone. This shows you where it's going to cut. And the last thing then to do is actually export these tool paths as G code. So here we've got this little um, save to a path icon, I click on it, and if nothing's ticked, there's nothing be output, so it's only what's visible. So if I tick that, that means this will be output. If I had set several different uh, vectors with different tools applied, I would have different uh, tool listings here, but I've only got one uh, operation with one tool here. And the post processor, it'll probably be up here by default. Just zoom it right down to the bottom and you should have OMPCNC arcs millimeter option. Select that and um, then we just save that, that tool path out and we'll save it to our desktop and we can just call this rectangle is a bit more meaningful and if I save that and you'll see it's in this post processor that we've selected here and it actually saves it as a .nc file numerical control. This is a G code file. So we'll save that, close that, and actually what I'm doing, I can just uh, minimize this out of the way now it's done. So we'll see we've got the file there. And uh, what we do now is actually open up our uh, WinPCNC. It'll start up, and then what we'll do is file open. And we've got our rectangle file, open it up, and as you can see, it's open the artwork up and zoom to it in, in the actual uh, work area here and that is the, the program listing here which is one of the options in our parameters earlier to have real-time file monitoring that brings this up and as we go through it it will highlight this 
So uh, what we need to do now is the, then to set our start point. Um, generally, if you just open the software and uh, you, you hit this option, it lasts you. Do you want to go to reference position? So we'll hit OK, and the machine will reference itself uh, up in the Z. Uh, then it will come across in the Y. And uh, then finally, when it finishes, then it will come across in the X as well. And that, that just lets the machine know where it is on the table, where absolute zero is. But for actually doing our job, we'll be using the, the actual working uh, area coordinates. So as we see, machine coordinates have been to zero. The machine now knows where it is, so it can monitor the envelope of the working area machine area. Um, and if we try to start a job which is bigger, which exceeds our, our machine working area parameters, it will warn us. So as I said before, that these values, they don't matter. We set our um, workpiece origin when we move it out. So what I do now is jog out the machine, um, and then we'll come on just over the actual uh, corner of our workpiece, or a rectangular block of material, um, bottom left-hand corner, and I'll bring the Z down. And then I'll just bring it down so it's just touching the surface with the tool fitted onto the surface of the material. And I'll do save to 0.xyz. And what you'll notice is that's where we are on the machine. And this is the actual origin working point where we are uh, just above it. So x and y are, are 0 where we are on the table now. So that means on our origin of our, of our artwork, that's where we are on the table. And again, that was just the safety tool lift. So you'll notice the important thing is here whenever I exit that it'll show me on the table where I am in terms of um, at 130 millimeters in X, 95 in, in, in Y, and um, that's where I'm going to be starting. And this is just, just the start point. So our actual origin of our artwork is here, and this is where we are on the table. Sorry, and this is where the, it's going to plunge in and start cutting on that. So all I do now is actually go to the, the start option, and when I do that, it'll um, just move across to here, plunge down, and then go across. And it'll do that for the four time for those four uh, passes. And we only see one actual uh, profile here because they're directly on top of each other. We've got a, a vertical view over the work. So if I hit start, it'll then go move across, and it'll go through this G code. And you can see that it's just working through that now and going through that. Generally, in the um, the settings for your G code, you'll have um, your speed set. And um, now I've got quite slow settings here because I think I've still got my parameters to uh, ignore the feed speeds and feeds from my G code. And um, if it's going a bit slow during a job, you've got this manual override. You can increase the actual feed rates here, so it goes through more quickly. But generally, the strategy I'd recommend is leave this at 100%. And um, actually, just uh, do the proper feeds and speeds in your, you know, artwork file, your, you know, your Aspire or your VCOV Pro, whatever you're using. So uh, we'll just let this to run through, and when it's finished uh, shortly, then uh, we'll have finished the job itself. Okay, so it's just coming to the end of the program now, and you can see that the progress has gone through here um, to near the end of the file, and as each line's read in, it just highlights the line, 
and it's just coming up to the end position now and uh, we'll see that the, the program finishes and exits uh, out of this control. Okay, so it's finished, lifted the tool and we're finished. And if we want to repeat the job now, or we hit start again and away you go. Similarly, if you've got you know a couple of jigs on the table or you've got a larger sheet of material, what we could do is just bring up our jog controls, move across to another point on the table, and uh, then we would, what we would do is save this point as our new uh, zero point, and uh, then all we would do is um, just exit that and click start, and then so we'd be cutting out of uh, another piece of the sheet of material. However, generally, if you've got an array of items to do, it's easier to just define it all in the uh, drawing program itself to do the multiples in that and process a single uh, GCO file from that. Um, so that's the basics of how we uh, generate some artwork, export the G-code, how we load that in, uh, reference the machine, go to our start point, and then uh, go through the job itself to finish. And those are the same steps you'll be repeating uh, throughout whenever you're using the software. There's pretty much not, not more uh, to it than that. And uh, once you've done your first couple of jobs, uh, you'll find it'll become very easy and it'll just be a repetition each time.